Hey everybody, my name's Ben, and I am not a professional presenter. So if I sound nervous or my voice is cracking or anything like that, it's because you're all staring at me. You know, if you laugh, that would make me feel so much better. I mean, let's, let's get it out right now. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Great, you just made this a lot easier on me. I appreciate that. Um, I live in the Midwest. I live in a city called Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, which is about halfway between uh, Milwaukee and Madison. Uh, another thing I'm really proud of uh, Wisconsin is we're the home of the Midwest Renewable Energy Association up about in the middle of our state. And uh, I, I've gone out there for a couple of years. I've worked on some different little homebrew projects. I just thought, you know, what's something one person can do to make a little bit of a difference, even if that difference is just saving on my water bill or saving on my electric bill. What is it that I can do? And I started getting into working on little projects. And a couple of years ago up at the MREA Energy Fair, somebody had an electric bicycle there. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. I could hop on a bike. I could just go, you know, 20 miles at a crack, no problem. It'd be kind of a, a neat little alternative transportation. And uh, that was great for one summer until, you know, people were always pulling out in their big cars right in front of me when I'm flying along. I didn't have a horn to honk at them at. I thought maybe uh, turn signals might be good. So the next summer, I built an electric motorcycle. And that was a lot of fun. And it kind of got towards the end of the year, and deer were jumping out in front of me at night. And I thought, boy, this isn't so good in the rain. It's definitely not good on the snow. You know, maybe something with more tires on the ground, maybe a roof, uh, more headlights. Oh, well, that's a car. And uh, so in January 2008, I said, I'm going to build an electric car. And I told all my friends. And they said, how are you going to do that? And I said, I've got no idea. <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. The electric motorcycle was a really fun project, but it was basically a glorified bicycle is really all it was. Very straightforward. Now, when you've got a car, there's a lot more things to think about. And I don't have a background in any of this. I had uh, one semester of, of shop class in high school. Um, on my gasoline cars, I changed the oil, and anything else was, was done at a service station. Um, and I, I guess that's one thing that really got me into this, was I always drove beaters. These cars would be you know, leaking oil on the driveway, They'd have smoke coming out the tailpipe. And at some point, I thought, this, this is just ridiculous. Isn't there something a regular guy can do to just you know, get around? You know, go to the grocery store and the library and work and all those sorts of things that, that you, know, you just got to do. And I found out that people were building their own electric cars. And there's a lot more of them out there than you think. But you might not even notice because they look like all the other cars. It's just you can't hear that they don't have an engine over your own engine idling. Um, I've got a little presentation put together. And to start off with, this is my electric car. <laughs> the one behind the Tesla Roadster. Um, I'm, I'm sure. Um, People interested in the subject, a lot of you know what a Tesla Roadster is. For those of you who don't, it is a very high-end, amazing, wonderful, exotic sports car, which just happens to be electric and cost as much as my house. So for a little bit better view, um, this here, this is my car. It's a 1996 Geo Metro, which in itself was a good gasoline car. And there's a few things about a good gasoline car that also make a good electric car. One thing is not weighing too much. The heavier a vehicle is, the more uh, power it takes to, to push it around, to get it going, to start it and stop it. So by having a, uh, a modest car uh, makes for a good start for an electric car. Also, this is a very simple car. It doesn't have uh, power windows. It doesn't have uh, all, all the bells and whistles on it. It was just a very nice basic car, which I liked because it meant uh, less messing around with things, less things to break. Uh, one winter I was actually carpooling. I was in the back of somebody else's car. They had power windows. Well, I rolled down my, my window, just get a little fresh air for a minute, went to roll it back up, and it wouldn't. It broke. So I had to drive another couple hundred miles in the winter with uh, my window rolled down, which uh, wasn't, wasn't real pleasant. So anyways, it's just a really nice basic car. And uh, among the many reasons for building an electric car, one is cost. Um, 
This is a photograph that I took um, summer of 2008 in the greater Los Angeles area. It's not a great photo, um, but I was doing some work out there and we had to refill the, uh, the gas tank on the rental car before going back to the airport. So somebody else was driving, they pulled out, and I looked at the gas price sign and went, holy cow, I need a photo of that. And I grabbed whatever camera I could to get this photo. Um, if you can't read it real well, the, the cheapest gasoline is $4.66 per gallon and diesel is $5.20 per gallon. And there's some people who say, you know, uh, peak oil, it's either here or it's coming. Even if it's not, we still need to get off of it. Uh, maybe we need $5 per gallon gasoline to, you know, kick everybody in the butt, you know, get us going. We've already had $5 per gallon gasoline. You know, it's already been here and it'll, it'll be back and we'll have $6 gasoline and $7 gasoline. Now, on the other hand, for an electric car, it's very inexpensive to run and electric prices are uh, very stable compared to the volatility of uh, gasoline prices. Um, another cost is how much a car itself. <laughs>